in 24 seconds. Your show will go live in five oh boy, oh boy. Three, two, Am I one. a tired little possum? What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Monday morning edition. It is Monday morning for you guys. How is it going? I hope you're out there crushing it, killing it, getting ready to crush it, getting ready to kill it. A uh, majority of you guys are in the United States of America, and uh, it is great to know that you guys are just waking up, starting your day early, and we got a show for you today. For those of you guys that are uh, fans and watching me on uh, Instagram, you'll know that today um, I started my, my fitness training again, which is great. I uh, went and got my eyes medically checked. And cleared, I am a, a 2020 vision according to the uh, doctors today at the uh, the LASIK Institute. So it is good to go. We we got a, oh, a lot of people here already. What's up, Peter? What's going on, Winston Wolf? What's up? What up? What up? What up? Let's see who else is in the house. Um, masculine mindset, masculine mentality. What's up, Pine? What's up? It's a veil. Yo, yo. Uh, Zarati Hadi. What up, Maine? New high score. What's going on, guys? Big Googs is in the chat. Myron Gaines is over on the Instagram. John Shore, Cyclops, leader of the X-Men. Ari Gold. Mr. Jackson, what's going on? Guys, Lewis, what's up, man? Oh, boy. Man, I just... Uh, so, I just got done... Uh, with little Brazilian Jiu Jitsu session. Uh, for you guys that follow me on Instagram, follow me at Modern Life Dating. Uh, so what happened was, Count Yoli, what's up, man? You're a new guy. Welcome, welcome, dude. I'm still getting used to like having perfect vision. It's it's so it's mind blowing, honestly, bro. It's so, it's unbelievable. I still think I have to like take off my my contacts at night and stuff. It's just unreal. Cody, what's up, man? Good morning. Nice to see you up and early. Phone lines are open, guys. If you want to call in, 657-383-1318. Um, yeah, it, it is just it is unreal. So I did a little jujitsu tonight. So what happened was um, I went to – I signed up today. Signed up for the uh, – the it's like a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, MMA, and Muay Thai gym. And the leader of the gym is uh, black belt in judo and black belt in – Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, former UFC fighter, Yoshi Yuki Yoshida. Uh, he is most famous for choking out War Machine. And he also got a pretty sweet uh, guillotine choke on Brandon Brandon Wolf, I believe that was his name. And uh, so what happened was I went to the beginner MMA class at uh, 7.30 p.m. And nobody came. So it was just me and him and we got to do personal one-on-one -on -one training and uh, he trained me and we and he's like you want to spar i was like yeah well, i'm not gonna fucking be a pussy and back down so he's like you want to grapple and shit i was like yeah okay and of course you know he's a black belt i'm a one-stripe white belt so he wiped the floor with me he and the guy's like made of the guy's like carved from stone his hands are like bricks man big gorilla brick hands and and the guy just just whooped my ass really he just beat my ass and and laughed the entire time he was doing it but i think it's good as a guy who's in a position of leadership and so many guys are uh you know looking looking to me for guidance and looking to me in a position of leadership um that i believe it is good to put myself in a situation where i am uh, incompetent and where i am the student and i'm completely you know um an amateur in order to give me better perspective for you guys. So, uh, yeah, it was just, it was, I'm actually really drained right now. My right elbow really hurts too. Cause I was, uh, I was trying to guillotine the guy, but his neck is so thick and he's a black belt. He's not going to get fucking caught in a guillotine by me. And, um, yeah, my arms are shot. Uh, it's just unreal. It's just unreal. Um, pri private, uh, privateer solution. What's up, man? 
War Machine, they're using their made-up names now. <laughs> uh, well, basically, the guy's name is uh, Jonathan Coppenhaver, John Coppenhaver, um, and he called himself War Machine, and then he legally changed his name to War Machine. But, uh, yeah, and that, he, he got choked out pretty pretty hardcore pretty quickly by uh, my now my now sensei. And this guy's really nice. I actually had joined another Japanese gym in 2013, and the, the, the coach there was just like a super fucking asshole. Uh, just like a real racist dickhead and um but here now it's just just unreal it's just like this guy's cool as shit it's really great oh man dude it was it was a beating peter it, uh, it was seriously beating peter you like this so from one from one fucking dork to another you know i say that with with love but i'm actually planning to get my uh my gi my uh jujitsu gi and uh, I'm, I plan to get it black. Everybody has a white one, but I plan to wear black, you know, in honor of Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. Because, come on, what kind of nerd would I be if I didn't, right? But it's good. Um, I'm exhausted, and um, I'm actually really mentally spent. But good lord, man. It, it, you see, the thing is, uh, uh, this, this type, type of training, training is high-intensity uh, interval, interval training, training which, which is the greatest, greatest for fat loss. loss. And I've got, I've got, got a good amount of fat that, that I've got to lose. And that's, that's why I did this. I'll also be attending kickboxing lessons. And um, I'm going to see if I can work out a negotiation with him so I can like live stream some stuff directly from the gym. I think it'll be good uh, publicity for him as well. But uh, yeah, Peter Kappas, welcome. You're new. He said, hey, all, which martial art would you recommend? Krav Maga or MMA? About to start taking classes. I would say Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Or, or MMA. MMA. That, that, that is just the most practical. What, what is, is a gi? A gi. Is, so uh, it's, it's a gi is a Japanese word. It's G I, and uh, it's like the the, the traditional like kind of like the fighting clothes that the karate guys wear, or um, got an echo. echo. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what he calls that. that. Let's see. How about, How about now? now? Is there an echo, echo now? now? Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. How is that? Is that better? We cannot hear you. <laughs> Am I the only one not hearing anything? I think the chat is slightly delayed as well. Echo? No? Yes? No? All? No? Yes, I echo. echo. Still, Still echoing? echoing? Oh, fuck. Really? Still echo. <laughs> Still got an echo. Even now? Check, check, check. Effects. Google to the rescue. Still echo? Let me know. 
The Echo Show. <laughs> the Demonic Echo MLD. Fuck, is it still echoing? Good now? All right, dope. Cool, 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 cool. All right, well, that was, that was, the, yeah, guys, guys on Instagram, you're fine. I think I know something was happening with uh, the guys on YouTube. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, well, well, thank you guys all for the, uh, the chat rate, because that also, actually, when you guys chat a lot, it boosts me in the algorithm for uh, YouTube, so thanks for that. Gabriel, what's going on, man? What's going on, Gabriel, over there on uh, Instagram? Um, so, yeah, so, uh, Peter Kappa says, hey, all, which martial art would you recommend, Krav Maga or MMA? Now, here's the thing. Krav Maga is not, it's not practical for civilians. You're not going to be disarming people with, um, disarming people with guns, disarming people with knives. But with MMA, you know, you'll be able to fully, capably defend yourself and use practical stuff like using people's clothes to strangle them. Uh, it also get your endurance up. I, I don't believe too much in Krav Maga. I just don't. I just think, I mean, it's okay. But, you know, Krav Maga versus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu wins every single time. Like, just Google it on the internet and you'll see. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is hands down. If you have to choose any martial art, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the way to go. 150,000%. There is no doubting that. Um, the Gracies did this in the 1970s. The, the Gracies were a, Br a, a Brazilian family. Bunch of fucking testosterone-driven badasses. Um, they went to every fucking gym of every type of martial arts. They went to the Kung Fu. They went to Karate. They went to Muay Thai. And they're like, who's your best guy? Who's your best guy? We're going to fuck them up. Bring them. Let's do this right now. We got this camera. Let's do it. And, you know, these guys coming into you coming into their house, you know, coming into their dojo and talking shit. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to whoop some ass. And so the Gracies like single-handedly defeated every single aspect of martial arts out there. So MMA, because the fundamentals are BJJ, definitely. I mean, between MMA and um, Krav Maga, I just don't see the practicality of Krav Maga for the average person. Like, you know, there's just, and then talk about just rolling and stuff, like sparring with the Krav Maga versus sparring with the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy. Go 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 do a go do a trial lesson at Krav Maga. Go do a trial lesson at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and you'll see a big big difference right there. Let's see, MMA is a good choice for competition. Krav Maga is better if you plan on fighting the street. No, I don't agree with that. I say MMA is way better. Yeah, <laughs> Gabriel is Gabriel's actual MMA fighter in Brazil, and he says only women should train Krav Maga. <laughs> Uh, Christian, what's up, man? Haven't seen you in a while. How long does it take to get a blue belt in BJJ two to three times a week? Christian, it takes as long as it fucking takes. That's what it takes. Okay? It takes as long as it takes. If you're at a Mick Dojo, you can get a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, blue belt in 90 days. I, I know a guy, you know, he's a real, he's, he lives in LA. So you, uh, right, right off the bat, you know, he's full of shit. And, uh, he said he got his blue belt in three months. Now, Somebody who gets their blue belt in three months, uh, I'm not believing that shit. That or the quality of the blue belt's very low. Because blue belt skill level in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is extremely hard to get. I would say if you're good two to three weeks, uh, about two years. But that's such a massive accomplishment, man. That's such a massive accomplishment. Considering concerning Muay Thai, do you have to be fit already or can you get fit along the way? Well, listen, yeah, just you can get fit along the way. Muay Thai, listen, martial arts is very hard, okay? When you talk about, especially Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, wrestling, okay? These things are extremely fucking difficult and they will really mentally push you to the limit. A lot of people. Uh, a lot of people quit, and uh, it's not easy. It is not easy. Uh, Gabriel says, one must not get a blue belt. One must become a blue belt. That is some deep knowledge for you boys right there. Peter Coppa says, thanks, man. You're welcome. John Sawyer says, BJs are fine, but BJJ. <laughs> Peter, your body will have no choice but to improve. Yes, it's very true. Colin says, I have a black belt in Taekwondo and love kicking and fitness, but I would probably do BJJ again if I could. Yeah, that's good. Yoli, still got it, man. That's bullshit. I want a blue belt from Gracie 
New York. No, that, that's good. Anything Gracie's good. Black belt on her neck means she's down to do nasty shit in bed. When likes to be, you know, wants to be submitted. Uh, black belt's a blowjob. There you go, Colin. I do every Sunday. Every Sunday is Kenjutsu. What to do after the sword is drawn. And Laijutsu on the, on the last Sunday. Followed by a Japanese din dinner tradition with sake. I would like to see that menu. I'll tell you if it's traditional Japanese or not. But yeah, guys, today we're going to talk about weight loss, diet, and fitness, all right? Now, I am going to say, like, honestly, I've, this is like, I've been kind of a hypocrite, right? And this kind of ties into yesterday's lesson, right? So the thing is, once you get your game to a certain level, your, your, your diet and fitness doesn't need to be that on point. However... Big however there. If you want to get the maximum hot babes, perform the maximum in your job, and just give her all overall maximum performance, you need to be in shape. You need to be in shape, okay? CJ Barnes says you should challenge Ed Lattimore to a boxing match. I would, I would, I would get killed. His, his hands are way better than mine. There's just box, guys who just train boxing have the best hands on the planet. Boxing tra trains the best hands. Muay Thai trains the best, like, kickboxing. And, uh, yeah, no, Ed Lattimore would fucking smoke me. He also outweighs me. Ed, Ed Lattimore is a fucking beast, man. Ed Lattimore is a fucking tank. That guy is a monster, and he's super smart, too. Um... Let's let's fucking talk about gains. Well, Michael, Michael's can Michael. Why don't you call in and just talk about what made you want to start lifting weights and how lifting weights changed your life? Because you know we got a lot of guys that are heavy hitters, and um, you know Big Googs is a monster. He's a, he's a strong man, beast. Michael Zarate is a fucking mini tank walking around everywhere, just fucking just Hercules. Um, Jacob, what's up? Jacob's pretty big too. It takes endurance to fuck bitch to sleep. Uh, depends on how many dicks she's had. Money, game, or looks, if you can only have one. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, if you have game, you can get money and you can uh, you can update your looks. Because you'll figure it out that money and looks are part of it. <gasps> uh. Excuse me. I'm fucking exhausted. That workout was insane. But yeah, being in shape will never hurt your game or confidence game. Yeah. So, you know, today's episode is just going to talk about um, weight loss, diet, and fitness. And as you guys know, I'm actually coming out with a free course. Um, I'm filming it. I got my new camera that is amazing. Uh, I got the Panasonic Lumix, and I'm going to be filming an entire weight loss course. Like legit front to end how to handle your food, how to handle your sleep schedule, how to manage your cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone and, uh, you know, just how to manage everything. And, you know, different diets and stuff work for different people. Like for me, you know, I, lo I know a lot of you guys are advocates of the carnivore diet, but if you're doing the carnivore diet, but you're doing like high intensity uh, workouts, like, you know, you know, you're sparring and boxing, any type, of, any type of combat sport or anything that re requires high intensity, you're going to need carbs. You are going to need carbs. You're going to burn out in the worst possible way. Like you can't just eat meat only and do those kind of things. Uh, carnivore diet can be mentally taxing. It can be very mentally taxing. For me, when I do, you know, when I just cut out all carbs, it's very hard because I live a very high paced life and I'm constantly using my brain, constantly thinking and, you know, the exercises I like to do, you require the glycogen stores. Glycogen is like basically energy stored in your muscles. It gives you a little bit of a full pulp, a full pump. And, um, you know, if you're going to do high intensity workouts, then you're definitely carnivore. I can't say a hundred percent that I, I, I can, I can get on board with that one. But if you're going to be low intensity and you want to slow and go, that's not bad at all. All right. I think this, this might be Michael. Let's see what it is. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Yo, yo. This is Zerati. Zerati Hadi. What's up, baby? 
Okay, so real quick, um, to answer your question that you asked earlier. So basically what really got me into uh, weightlifting was part of the fact was um, I was really small all throughout high school, um, both short um, and just not just not big. Uh, I think I was 5'6", all the way through like 11th grade. <laughs> um, so because of that, I got picked on a lot and I wasn't picked on for, for sports or anything like that. But I was also, I was always really fast um, and that type of thing. So when I got deployed, um, my buddy and I started training all the time and we really got into meal timing. There was a point in time where I would wake up, protein shake, go to company PT, come at, eat breakfast, protein shake again, go to lunch, protein shake again, go train, protein shake, eat dinner, protein shake. And I went from 160 pounds to 195 pounds in like nine months. Damn. Was it a dirty bulk? It was, it was crazy, crazy gains. Yeah, I was just eating everything. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. How has it changed you? How, how did people like change? How did people t treat you versus when you had muscles versus how you didn't? Um, so especially right now that I have a nice V taper going and I'm at a, a moderately low body fat percentage. And anywhere you go, people kind of move out of your way. Um, I've even found that like women and, and, and older ladies will open the door for you. Good stuff. And and uh, people remember who you are. Like, I go to these rave events, and people will remember who you are. Like, you don't have any idea who they are, but they they see you and they remember you. Like, oh, yeah, you're that big motherfucker. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Were you at this event? Yeah, yeah, that was totally me. And uh, people want to be your friend. Like, guys, uh, guys especially, there's, like, this weird high mind monkey mentality where um, – Everybody wants to be friend, the big, strong ape. So when you become that big, strong ape, other people want to be friends with you and befriend you because you are that big, huge pillar in the middle of the room. And uh, even at work, there's so much more I can get away with and more of you know, the dominance I can assert over other people at work to get shit done versus when I was small. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Good stuff, man. Good stuff overall. What are your fitness goals now? Um, so I'm probably going to try my best once I finish this um, PHEA cycle and then I have a PCT cycle to go through. So I'll probably start cutting hard. Uh, I want to say May. Mm. So that give me from May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, I want to I wanna try to compete in October. That should give me enough time Good. to get lean. And I know a couple other dudes locally that would be giving me uh, tips. Yeah. So I'm going to try to compete come October, November. Good. Do it. Good stuff, man. Well, I'm going to carry yeah, I'm like For all the guys listening out there, dude, you got to get, you gotta get the games, man. The games are huge. Good shit. All right, man. Thank you so much. We're going to take another call. I appreciate you always, bro. Take care. Yep. Bye. All righty. Let's move on to our next caller as soon as Blog Talk Radio catches up. Pine, is that you? Jonathan. What's going on, of man? Of course it is, buddy. How you doing? I got a call in Descent Carnivore, bro. Yep, let's hear it. So, first off, with the low energy thing, yeah. that's simply because you're not taking in enough fats, and your body has a unique ability called gluconeogenesis, where it can actually convert B protein into glucose. Mm -hmm. So you will get a glycogen store in your muscles and your liver. The problem is most people don't go through the adaptation phase. That takes up to three weeks. Most people just don't have the, uh, the uh, will and patience to do it. Yep, so that's certainly me. Burst exercise, it's it's entirely possible, and I've practiced Krav for a while, and I'll tell you right now, just in my personal opinion, most of what people see is the military side of Krav, 
the civilian side of Krav is a whole other ball game. Because I got nothing against BJJ. I think it's great for a sport. But the disadvantage with BJJ, Muay Thai, and everything else is you have a set of rules you have to play by. And those get ingrained in you. There's certain things you will not do because you are trained out of it. They don't have those rules. And there are a lot of Krav guys who still do BJJ. I don't say restrict yourself to one discipline. Branch out. Learn how to roll on the ground if you have to. But in a street fight, it's generally not advisable to go to the ground because you're normally not just one person there and his buddies are going to come and start stomping on you. So yeah. That's just my mileage on it. Well, I mean, the, all yeah, this... I've done the more, you know, flashy flashy disarm stuff, but... Yeah, I just think it's but... more practical. I've been in a lot of street fights, and um, most guys, once you get it to the ground, they have no idea what they're doing. So if you have if you don't have any ground training, I'd say because to be the complete fighter, if you don't have any ground training, you're gonna just gonna be you're gonna get fucking destroyed in a in a fight with a guy one on one. You're right. And uh, I I have had like a, a, right. I had a fight with this guy, you know uh, I was I was being like a kind of a white knight. It was so funny, but I ended up the guy had no training uh, on the ground. I put him in full mount and I just started feeding the guy elbows and it was just it was over and out. So I just I can't I can't a hundred percent say that Krav Maga I I truly believe that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah. is uh okay is so, a superior uh, martial I'm art. Gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. Krav does teach groundwork. Okay. They teach you how to fend off a full mount. They do take in BJJ training, but they also show you eye gouges, throat strikes, nut strikes, you know, dirty fucking fighting. Yeah. They take the limits off, dude. If you want to compete, go with Muay Thai, go with BJJ, great. If you want to fight in the street and, and get into some heavy shit and want to get out of it, even against... Now, I'm not going to say if you're fighting against a really well-seasoned fighter, you're going to win. You're probably not. They're probably going to catch you with that, you know, off, off hit, especially if they compete a lot. They're just going to have the timing better. But, and your average person who doesn't know shit about it, I'm going to kick you in the nuts and then I'm going to drive my knee into your fucking chin. You are not going to have that, especially if you're in a in a competition trained sport, because that's a no go zone. That goes against the the competition rules. Well, I mean, now, like I said, you know, I'm I not I, I, I gotta I gotta MMA, it's I, good fucking shit. I gotta disagree with you there. So I, I think the only way we're gonna have to solve this is uh, you and I are gonna have to fight and we're gonna have to live stream it in Poland, and whoever wins is the victor. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, <nah>, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't gonna happen, bro. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you, dude. I, I'm ready. I'm not, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like I'll side all the waivers. Like, I'm ready to go. This, we'll, oh no, dude, 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 no, no, no. It's not. It's that's not cool, bro. But you know what? We get some fat man suits. Maybe I'll change my tune on that. Cool. Sounds good. But thank, thanks for calling those, in. Those red impact suits. Thanks, thanks, right, and we'll hey, uh, we'll take it easy and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the chat. Thanks a lot. Brother. Yeah, big googs. Why don't you call in, baby? I don't know if you have. I don't know if you have the, if you have the freedom to call in, but you know the numbers on screen. I I I, I just I don't agree. I believe that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is one of the fucking most deadliest martial arts on the planet, and you know, just because you train eye gouges and throat strikes doesn't mean that you automatically have the advantage. I I, I I've been. I've trained with high-level guys before, high-level guys, even the average guys, even guys with an ego and a blue belt. That that shit is like you just you truly don't know unless you've gone and you had a good old sparring session or a jujitsu session. Um, you just you truly don't know. It, it's 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 honest. It's it's you know you don't know until you just get on there and um, get out there and make it happen with the uh, with the training. You it's a whole. It's a whole enlightening series, man. It is just something else, man. I'm telling you. I'm, my body is already hurting from just doing two five-minute rounds with, uh, with my Yoshida sensei. The guy, the guy's a fucking his hands are like cut from bricks. I've, I, I have to say, I, I just versus Krav Maga versus uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I totally side with it. But I, I understand if like you're fighting in, a, in you know, like a street and you take a rock and you bash the guy's head in. But I mean, or like you know, you punch him in his throat or, or gouge his eyes. Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't really take too much training just to gouge somebody's eyes out. Um, let's go. Let's see. What we got the Peter says, smash the like. Yeah, forty three like, forty three guys watching, and then um, five watching on Instagram. How long do training sessions take on average? I 
I would be shocked if anybody can go more than one hour training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it puts something in you. I call it, me and my friend, we joke around, but like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is so intense that it makes you feel a, a certain, I call it the despair. You feel like the despair of life coming on you. Like, you know, when there's a certain type of fatigue that hits you in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that is, it is like nothing else, man. There's like nothing else out there. Like, you know, there's another, it's one thing like running sprints until you're exhausted, but grappling until you're exhausted and grappling, running out of energy and feeling this guy encroaching on you and like literally your impending death coming into you or uh, coming onto you. It is, it is, it is something else. Um, but yeah, Googs, if you want to call in, man, I, I'm totally about it. I don't know if you, if you have the ability to. Saying one is better than the other is, is an apex fallacy. They're all awesome. The content and the practitioner matters. Interesting. Um, let's see what else we got here. I didn't eat carbs for months and got ripped. Now I eat carbs before and after training nearly as ripped and the quality of life is much better. Yeah, I try like when I do the because I'm just like a very on the go kind of guy. And you know, I think that the, there's something yeah, the adaptation phase is three weeks. I just don't my life is just too fast paced. I got too much going on to be exhausted for three weeks. If I'm exhausted for one hour, I'm like, this is bullshit. Um, but that's very interesting. Yeah, before and after training. That's good stuff. Carb cycling works if you're carb sensitive. Same. I time my carbs pre and post workout. Good stuff. Greg B says, yeah. Whoever wins gets the other person's stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> Fight of the century. Gentlemen, always remember, street fights don't last as long as Hollywood shows. Most of it is all talk and the rest is a few blows followed by more talk. Yeah. Very, very true. Very true. Well, you're on the right track. I don't worry too much about it. Calories is king. Don't worry about too much about carbs. They are great for performance. Focusing on increasing strength and performance while. Yeah. Let's see. MLD versus the carnivore. <laughs> while saying saying one is the other. Let's see. Boxing and BJJ for the win. Very good combination there. Grab my guys is shit too. Good stuff. Um, let's see. Most fights end up on the ground, so BJJ is needed on the ground. Yeah, BJJ is super draining. Absolutely, Zerati. Especially if you're fighting black belts. BJJ will humble you 100%. Makes you feel like a bitch, to be honest. Yeah, dude, it really does. It really does. I'm in the office right now. Yeah, the webinar is going to be live after this, guys. For all you body language mastery guys, the webinar is going to be live. Um, and then I'm going to blast a, a mass email out to uh, everybody. And uh, you guys can get into the link after this. Um, but yeah, so... That's just, you know, we kind of got sidetracked there. But honestly, no matter what, if you're doing a high-intensity um, combat sport, like Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, even stuff like, you know, Taekwondo, when you're doing a lot of sprint kicks, as long as you're getting your heart rate up and you're exhausting yourself, the weight loss is going to be like extremely fast. So when it comes to weight loss, diet, and fitness, I, I always say this, like, you know, the the quality, so when I look back, right, and the time in my life where I was getting the hottest girls, I also happened to be in very, very good physical shape, all right? That's the great thing about being a man, guys. If you guys can just get decently muscular and get your fat, even if you get your body fat down to like 15%, I, I mean, you can get down to 10%, and for you guys that are like naturally lower body weight, lower lower body fat, that's fine. Like getting down to 10%, but having a good amount of muscle, uh, that's really good. That's really good long term, and like and the girls, they really lose it for that. But as long as you're around, I say, in my opinion, if you're around 15% body fat and you're pretty jacked, you're going to be way above the rest of the pack. Way above the rest of the pack. So... Um, that's that when I come, when it comes to weight loss, you want to have, like I'm always telling you guys, make money, make muscles, study game. Uh, you want to be, the, the goal is not to be skinny. The goal is to have muscles and you want to be able to have a good amount of muscles and you want to be looking, you know, like a muscular guy. Like I, I will here, let me pull up some examples here. Like, okay. So obviously th this is a, this is a classic one, but if you can achieve this kind of look right here. This is an absolute panty dropper. Yeah, but this takes a lot of effort. 
unless you just naturally have that build. Uh, let's see. Let me find a good one. Okay. So, right here, this is Brad Pitt and Fight Club. This is a really good look. Very lean. This is like the, this is like the K-pop or like the pop star look, right? The Justin Bieber look. This is like what is very, very sexually appealing. Because, you know, there is something like Ranko Zarate brought it up. And when he called, it was pretty interesting. He brought it up. But if you get super, super jacked, you actually start attracting a lot of guys too. A lot of guys like, yo, bro, you're jacked. Like, how do you do that? And you got to, yeah, you start getting a lot of guys that are asking you about like, you know, your fitness and shit. You right. This is a really good look here. Um, it's lean. This is very, unless you have the certain body type, this is, in my opinion, pretty hard to achieve because you have to like really diet down. I'm a guy that has like, I just naturally store body fat in my stomach. So this look is like very, this would probably take me a year to get like, like, like looking like that. This is a good one too. Brad Pitt in, uh, in Troy. Like this is very good. Women eat this shit up. They were literally, I had a friend of mine who's, who's like, he's a boxer and he has like this build and he's kind of genetically gifted in the fact that he's, he can get shredded real quick in his stomach. And he said that girls, they, they like, they lick his obliques. They lick him right here. Uh, yeah, for you guys on Instagram, just come over to, um, Modern Life Dating on YouTube and you can see the full show. Uh, I'm showing stuff right now, showing good examples of guys that are pretty jacked and, uh, what, what's good for you. And I honestly, this one is pretty good, but this is, takes a lot. Like, this is a good one. If you want to talk about uh, Chris Hemsworth as Thor, you know, this is a really good look, too. Um, clearly very jacked, you know, good arms. Forearms a little smart. Well, maybe that might, might be that angle. It looks small because this one looks big. But this is really good too. And he's not super low body fat. I would say he's probably floating around mm, like 12 to 13%. He's not super ripped, but he has very defined abs here. And this is a super good look too. And then, you know, that's like this is – girls idolize this stuff, man. They really do. Uh, and let's see. What's another good one? Uh, you know, if you become like – I think too big is like really not good at all. Like, because then you just start, like, like if you get, like, big like this, this is not really attractive to women. This is more attractive to guys. This is Jay Cutler. He's a, he's a bodybuilder. And not to mention, when you get this jacked, a lot of these guys have, like, severe health issues after they're done doing this shit. And this guy's just taking a fuckload of steroids. Like, that, that's a lot of burden on the human heart. So, that's just another example there. But yeah, you know, those are just some examples of what uh, what looks good. Let's see what's that. Let's just say, uh, ba, 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 ba. whoa, things flying. Hey, Jonathan, I go to work, work helping these floods in the Midwest right now. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Colin. Have a good day. AJ Cortez Achilles program is extremely clutch. Good stuff. AJ Cortez, is, he knows his shit. You want to look like a beast. Not a bad idea. Ate like a fat ass over the weekend. Now going into 48 hour fast. Good shit. You want to look you want her to look at you and she wants you to dominate her. Yes, big googs can can testify to that. Forearm building and shoulders need work. I based on forearm cues. Yeah. He's small. He is. But you know, I'm telling you, it's like there's girls, I'm telling you, they eat that shit up, man. They eat it up. When you're super lean, girls like throw all reason out the fucking window. And they're just like short circuit. And they're ready to just go after you. When cut, chicks all over. Yeah, see right there. In bulk mode, blokes hit on you. And when cut, <laughs> chicks all over. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. I know what I'm talking about. Um, How about the rocks muscle shape? He's too big. I mean, he's he looks great. But most girls, you know, it's it's just a little too big. Irish Bateman says, very obtainable, John. Get to 315 squat, 350 dead, bench 300, all red press 185, weighted chin 60 pounds while at a low body fat. I don't think I've ever hit any of those. I think the most I've ever done a deadlift is like three, 
a little over 315. Bench, most of what I've done is like 240. Overhead press, uh, 135. Squat, I, my squat sucks. I have chicken legs. I have like super long legs and my calves are just like genetically super skinny. Like kind of like John Jones or uh, Anderson Silva. Um, my squat probably, oof, 225. But I, I don't I don't train, I never really train to like get super, super jacked. I train to be like, you know, A, look good, and then B, you know, be a better fighter. Most of these fitness cats are on steroids. Yeah, he is. He is. Rich Piana. Rich Piana is fucking dead, man. God bless the guy. Oh, we got a caller. Let's see what it is. All right, hold on. Hey there, caller, you on the air? Yo, Jonathan, it's Myron Gaines out of Miami. What's up, man? Hey, what up, killer? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. I'm choking. Am I coming through okay here? Or? Yeah, you sound great. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm using the Bluetooth on the car, so it's fucking sometimes it's trash, sometimes it's good. But, hey, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, this is a great episode on fitness and uh, diet, man, which is like kind of my my thing. I will say this. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the goods are, you know, the girls are going to think you're – more attractive, uh, obviously you feel better, look good, feel good. But the negative that people don't know is that uh, you're going to attract a lot of gay guys. You're going to get a lot of attention from gay dudes, especially like I live in Miami. Yeah. A lot of gay dudes live here, so you're going to yeah. get weird looks. Uh, another negative is you automatically make girls self-conscious. So like some girls will just write you off as a tool off rip, like without even you opening your mouth and talking to them, they'll just think, oh, you, you probably think you're better than me or something. And like they'll just reject you for that. Um, and then another negative I would say is uh, assuming you're eating pretty fairly healthy, uh, kind of expensive. But, hey, man, it's, it's worth it. You know, you're better off buying healthy food than spending a shit ton of money on booze every weekend. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, but and then I would say um, if guys want to uh, fight club, wrapped in a fight club was, is a great uh, physique to go for if you're, like, solely interested in getting girls because um, the burden isn't that high. If you want to get girls, I feel like, off of your body because like most girls themselves are in shape so, right like if you go to the gym a decent amount and have like decent shoulder development and some abdominals girls are automatically gonna gonna like you i would say always train your so shoulders to create that illusion of uh the golden ratio is 1.6 of uh shoulders to waist mm. so just some small things there i guess great advice great <clears throat> advice great great real practical advice man thank you so much for calling in and um, yeah, we'll see. If, let's nah, thanks, Dr. For me. see if you can get on the webinar soon. Um, I don't know if you can do it after the show, but then uh, maybe tonight in Miami time, eight p.m. Nice, nice. And I also want to say, uh, give uh, if you don't mind me doing a shameless plug here. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Guys, my Instagram is uh, Aesthetic Gains, one word, Aesthetic Gains, and uh, I'm actually going to start training people. Uh, you know, to try to get that aesthetic physique. That's kind of my. My specialty is getting people from uh, from sip to pimp, baby. <laughs> yeah, drop it in the chat and uh, let oh. these guys follow you, man. You're the real deal. I like you, so you're good. All right, man. Well, thank you for having me, dude, and everybody else stay safe out there. You guys be good. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <clears throat> I've had a chat with that guy on um, Instagram. That guy's mad cool. Follow him on Instagram, Aesthetic Gains. Aesthetic Gains. 55 inches around the shoulders, 34 inch waist. Damn, you have a 34 inch waist. That's pretty fucking thick, bro. That is pretty damn thick. Um, XR Park, what's up? Some man's boobs bigger than women. Yep. <laughs> Kevin Samuels talked about the magic ratio of a difference of seven between your waist and the chest. That's really appealing to chicks. Yeah. No, and that's what I'm talking about this on today's episode, okay? Now, at the end of the day, you know, I, I fucked up. All right, I got out of shape in October, and to be honest with you, I got a little little sad. I got a little depressed because of my injury. I was like, God damn it, I can't go to the gym. And I did yeah, I did what most most girls do after a breakup. I ate my feelings. I was like, God damn it, this sucks. And then I went to, to Colorado, and I went to the great state of Wyoming, and I had a good old vacation in America, and I was eating Chipotle, double steak, guacamole. You know, I was just binging on all the American food that I don't have access to in Tokyo. And I kind of got a little fat. And then, you know, Body Language Mastery launched, and then I had I had to take care of all that, and then I got LASIK, so, but no, I started back up today, um, feeling really good, and um, I'm going to come out with the Body Language Master, uh, excuse me, not Body Language, I'm going to come out with the uh, the weight loss course, 
Um, because I have gotten very lean before. I have gotten very, very lean before. I don't know. I don't have. Can I access any photos? I don't think I have any online. But the I got really lean in 2015. But literally, it was like all I did was work, pimp, and then like weigh my food and like religiously eat literally every day. 100 grams of rice, 200 grams of chicken, and 75 grams of, of broccoli. And literally, that's what I ate twice a day. I ate that twice a day and some protein shakes. And once in a while, I would go to like the um, – there's all-you-can-eat restaurants in Japan. And um, I would just, just – tear it up at those things and like because you know even now because i'm doing uh i'm doing intermittent fasting now and i was just i just i was just crushing food when you're when you work out a lot your body your metabolism is faster and like you're kind of an animal you're always hungry but it's really good it is really good yeah woe is me right john sharp woe is me <laughs> neo yasha what's up man japan japan's hardest working pimp that's right uh, you can call it the Body Master Weight Loss Course. Actually, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Peter. I might do that. I might do the Body Master Weight Loss Course. Actually, that sounds pretty cool. Um, Mr. Caballero says, go full calisthenics in a few months to experiment, and I fucking hate commercial gyms. Interesting. But calisthenics doesn't allow – there's a certain – if you want to get jacked, like big, 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 you, there's, a, there's a roof to calisthenics. So for all you guys, this is what I say. Okay, This, this is what I, I, I recommend. Okay, for you guys, because you want to do something that's sustainable, right? I'm guilty of going like insanely dedicated at the gym and then just going full fat bastard, like eating pizza, slamming Fanta and just, you know, just just being just being an animal, really. I'm, I'm just a wild child. But when you can stay when you can stay consistent with it and, and have a sustainable lifestyle, it's just it's night and day. It's night and day. Actually, some of the best memories I had were like when I was really, really good shape. Um, so there is, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Ultimately, you just want to go like, okay, let me just find a, a decent, let me, okay, let me say, like, I would say even 18% body fat is, is enough, is enough for like, uh, getting out and just, just womanizing and, and being the hot dude. Okay. Let me get a good example. Okay, like honestly, this right here, to, be honest, to set the bar pretty low, but this is just reality, okay? Oh, nope. This guy here, this right here is enough. This right here is enough. You see he's got pretty big shoulders, right? For And good traps, good symmetry. Chest is not that developed, but arms are good, forearms good, and he's just lean enough, right? So this is like, this is good enough to, to be a womanizer. Okay. I've never been this shredded before, right? I've never been this shredded. I would say probably the, the most shredded I've been is probably a little bit like, like this, like right in the halfway mark between these two guys, right? But if you can get, if you can get down to like something like this, this is ideal. But even this on the left, this is fine. This will get you plenty above average sex with a lot of different girls. Don't don't let people t like tell you that you don't need a good body, man. Being a, having a good body is such a, like a cheat code to like getting more girls. And if you have a good body plus game, forget about it. Neil Yasha says, "I'm fucking with your mindset. The training shit is up my alley. Good shit, bro. Keep moving forward. Just checking out your stuff for a sec. Peace. See you later, bro. Thanks for watching. Stefan, what's up, man? Come over to YouTube." Um, body master course. Yeah, you cannot train. You cannot out train a bad diet. That's very true. Is it a free course? Yes, it is a free course. A, a few bad days of eating can offset your diet so much. Yeah, it depends on how bad your day, your days of eating are. But honestly, exercise is easy. Eating is hard. Yeah, staying fit is a lifestyle, not a diet. Take care of your body. It will thank you later. That's hundred percent true. Actually, it's a scientific fact. The more calories you consume, the the sooner you die. But uh. Fuck it, I'm going out on a pizza. <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, there, there is, you know, there are some like fitness myths. Like honestly, six percent to eight percent body fat is really not sustainable. It's really not sustainable unless you're genetically predisposed to that type of body, 
it's really not sustainable to stay that thin. It 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 just it doesn't work out. I would say if you're still pretty militant about it, 12 to 18 percent body fat is pretty militant, and that is if your if genetics are not on your side. But the benefits of it is this, okay? A it teaches you discipline, which is the most important skill any man can have in this life. With discipline and consistency, you can you can accomplish everything. Okay, Donovan Sharp is the one who said that, and Donovan Sharp really gave me a fucking revelation when he said that. With consistency and discipline, you can do almost anything. Okay. Um, next one is, you know, the weight loss aspect is good. You're just going to feel good. There is a certain great feeling when you take off your shirt and you look in the mirror and you're happy with what you see. That right there is priceless. That is one of the most priceless feelings in the entire world. Take off your shirt, look in the mirror, and be like, God damn, I look fucking amazing. Number three, just the mental clarity, mental mental everything that you get, the, all the benefits from just being in good shape is just unbelievably insane. It's so fucking good for you. It is so good for you. Uh, it's just really just something that... Oh, my mic's there. Give me a second. I want something. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hello? 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 Let me see. Good? So, uh, okay. So, anyways, um, what's going on is that, uh, yeah, it just gives you good mental clarity as well. Super mental clarity and allows you to optimize your performance at a big, big, big rate. You act, like if you're in shape, you just your brain works better. You're more sharp. You're more energized. It's just way much better. Andy says, I suggest eating out of a bowl. It's harder to overpack the bowl with food and it looks pleasing to the eyes. Good. That's very good. That's a very good thing there. Target's 15%. Good. Okay, you can hear my, my good. Joe, what's up, man? I have genetic predisposition to go to the opposite direction. I'm supreme at, uh, at building a fat body. That sucks. In and out. Also, it's a great feeling if you don't have to buy your clothes in oversized stores. Yes, that is. Octavia, what's up, man? Good stuff. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. You know, weight loss, diet, fitness. These things are super important to getting like your fitness on track, but also like getting your dating life on track. It is it is night and day. There's nothing better than looking good and feeling because like, when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you perform well. And the the health benefits are there as well. Like I, I got to say, like, you know, even nowadays, I kind of look in the mirror. I'm a little I got a little bit of a belly. And honestly, I have like I get a little bit I get a little like uh, insecure. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of a fat shit like this sucks. But, you know, when you're in really good shape, it really helps out. It's just so much better too. But it's true. Like guys, guys compliment you. Women compliment you. It's just so much better overall. And um, you know, it's just ultimately, it's just it's a better thing to be uh, in better shape than not in good shape. I, mean, I know it may sound like common sense for you guys, but it's very very true. Um, you're having trouble getting into the body language mastery group. Oh, uh, you should be able to get into the Facebook group. You're in there, man. Walmart uses mixing bowls as cereal bowls. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I think I have to do more. Good. Good mentality. Uh, I've been drinking lots of beer and wine. I'm getting a bit of a belly from this. Do you have any advice from this? Yeah, stop drinking beer and wine. That's a good place to start. But yeah, guys, so that's going to can it today for the show. Um, what I need you to do is go ahead and... And give me uh, an, an, uh, a like, comment on this video after, and then shoot me an email at questions at modernlifedating.com if you are going to be in today's webinar. Webinar is going to fire up in about 30 minutes or so. 
And um, yeah, I'm gonna mass email everybody, but the people who shoot me an email first will get priority access. You get five minutes, okay? You get five minutes. If you don't, if you miss the email or you miss the the first the the primary email, then I mass email everybody, okay? So you guys gotta be on it. You gotta be on it and ready to join. Um, so the webinar is going. It's gonna be starting uh, in about like 30, 40 minutes. and need to take a little break. And then from there, uh, I'll be seeing you guys in the webinar for the Body Language Mastery students only. Um, CJ, DM me on Instagram. I'll get you into the Facebook group. Seems like there's a little bit of an error or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me know. But yeah, thanks guys so much. And um, I will see you boys next time.